Hi and welcome to this week's Essential Lightroom video tutorial. In this video I'm going to take you step by step through the process that I've used on this image to create this sort of Band of Brothers style effect. As always there's a free preset and the link is in the description below. And stick around to the end of the video because there's a few extra steps I'm going to take you through that will take you from beyond what the preset will give you. So let's take a look at how we can do all of that right now. Okay, so this is our starting point, and as you can see, it's a pretty decent photograph to start off with, but it doesn't have that cinematic, grainy, kind of low contrast look to it. So we're going to go through step by step through the develop module and see exactly what I've used to create this effect. Like I say, the free preset will get you close, but every image needs its own individual treatment, and we're going to focus on this one. So we're going to come over to the develop module, and we're going to start off in the basics panel. So I'm only going to make a few little tweaks in this section because there's not much I want to do. The real sort of meat of this is done through the color options. So the first thing I want to go through is just to bump the contrast up because I want to get some real dark shade in there. I want to get some real sort of contrast to the overall image. So we're going to boost that up. We're going to go crazy with it, probably about plus 25, plus 30, somewhere around there. That's looking pretty good. Now the next thing I want to do is strip out a lot of the colour from this. So we're going to come down and we're going to take the vibrant slider and we're going to reduce that down to almost nothing. And that's going to take the sort of the greens and so on in the, in the image, the sort of warmer colour, shall we say. It's going to take those and strip those out. So we're going to drop that down to about minus 70, somewhere around that region. And as you can see, that now restrips really the colour out of it. Now for any of those colours that are left we don't want, we're just going to take the saturation and drop those not anywhere near as much, probably about minus 20, so quite a subtle change to it. And then we're going to come to the clarity slider, we're going to bump that up a little bit, just to get some sort of real high contrast edges on this, get a real nice sort of contrast to the overall image. Somewhere around the 30, 35 mark is pretty good. So as you can see, we've now got a fairly desaturated image and we've got some real contrast in it to sort of bring out those details. So that's all we're going to do in the basics panel. So we're going to come down next to the tone curve. Now, we're going to make a slight alteration to this that's different to what you might normally work with. Normally we work with the RGB, so that's affecting all of the colors in the entire image. And we can work with that in two different modes. We can work in linear or we can work in the point curve mode. So you can see we can switch between the two. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come to where it says RGB in linear point curve mode and I'm going to expand that out and I'm going to come down and choose the green channel because I want to make some color alterations to the green and how that actually inter interacts with the overall image. Now the tweak that I'm going to make to this is really quite subtle but when you combine it with some of the other color alterations what it'll do is it'll bring back some of the, the warmer tones to the green. So I'm just going to add a couple of points in. And all I'm going to do is just bring this middle point and just bring that down slightly. Just pulling that down ever so slightly and that's going to bring some back some of the, the sort of tones that I want. You can see it changes the colour. So if we take a look at before and after, you can see it just brings back a little bit of the green in it. But when we combine that with some of the other colour alterations, you'll see that this will really warm up the overall image. I just want to bring this down as well just to strip out some of that extra green we've added in there. Add a little bit of warmth to it, sort of take out some of the green, make it sort of just a little bit sort of warmer. So I'll leave that as it is now. I might come back and tweak that a little bit later. So let's just leave the tone curve where it is. But most of what we're going to do is inside the HSL section. So we expand that out and we've got the hue, saturation and luminance. I'm going to come to the saturation because I'm going to deal with how the colors are actually going to interact with the overall image. So what I want to do is I'm going to take the reds. We're going to bump those up to about 30, 35. We're going to do the same with the orange, we're going to bump that to exactly the same amount, so about 35. That's going to bring back and boost those sort of those warmer tones in the saturation. We're going to take the yellow, we're going to drop that out because I don't want too much yellow in this. I'm going to drop that down to about minus 80. I'm going to go a fair all way with that. Somewhere around there, that'll do. And then the greens, we're going to take those and drop those down a little bit as well, about minus 25. Now this is just the saturation we're dealing with, so we're just stripping out some additional colour and we're choosing which colours we want to reduce in the overall image. Let's jump over to the luminous tab. We're going to take the yellow on this, we're going to drop that right the way down to minus 100. And you can see that when we take that down, you look at the colour in the fields and that has quite a marked effect on that. You can see that strips out the extra yellow information. And all we're going to do now is we're going to take the green and we're going to reduce that down by about minus 20. So there we go, that'll do. So let's take a look at before and after. There's where we were. 
there's after. So you can see we kind of flattened all the fields down a little bit. Now we're going to come over to the split toning section and we're going to make some color alterations to the highlights and the shadows in this image. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add some color into the highlights. So we're going to take this up and we're going to take that up to about, about 128, somewhere in that region. That's where I've kind of found is a good starting point. And that's going to bring back, allow us to control some of the green in the highlights. Saturation, we're going to keep this fairly low. Let's take this up to about, about five. So look. There's the before, there's the after. So you can see we just bring back a little bit of green into that. We need the balance as it is at the moment. And I'm going to come down to the shadows and we're going to deal with those and we're going to add some, some sort of warmth into the shadows. So about 45, 49, somewhere around there. And then we're going to take the saturation and we're going to give this a bit more. So we're going to bump that up to about 22. And as you can see, what that does now is that brings back some of that sort of greeny orangey kind of tone to the grass if i sort of do a before and after you can see it just warms the overall image up ever so slightly now we're going to adjust the balance just a little bit in favor of the highlights we're going to bring that down to about minus 35 somewhere around that region that'll do so we do it before and after and you can see now we get a sort of more greeny kind of tone to it i mean a greeny yellow sort of with a bit of red in there can't really describe it but you can hopefully see it on screen at the moment and if you look at band of brothers you can see it has this sort of desaturated um sort of olive kind of color to it and that's why we're trying to sort of recreate with this so we finished with the split toning now let's drop that out of there and we could leave it at this point if we wanted to, but what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of grain into the image just to give it a bit more punch, make it look a bit more filmic. So we're going to come down onto effects and we're going to come down and we're going to take the grain slider and we're just going to give that a bit of a bump up. Not going to go crazy with this. We want to add a bit of grain. So let's go to 100% so we can kind of see what we're dealing with. So that's looking pretty good. And we're just going to make the size just a little bit larger. Not too much. Take it to about 35 to 40, somewhere around there. And the roughness, well, let's just bring that down ever so slightly. And that gives us sort of like a, just a nice bit of film grain into it. And finally, what we're going to do is I'm going to just take and add a bit of vignette to this so we can just draw the attention into the focal point of the image, which in this instance are the helicopter. So let's just draw that into there. So let's do a before and after. So there's before. There's after, so we just added that little bit of sort of filmic element to it. So this is where the preset ends, and we could leave the image there if we wanted to without any problem. It looks pretty good. But if we want to make it more filmic, there's a couple of things we can do. First of all, I want to deal with this helicopter that's in front. It's a little bit dark for my liking, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back into the basic panel, and we're going to come into the shadows and open those out ever so slightly. And the same with the blacks, we're just going to open those out a little bit so you can see we can go don't go too crazy with it but we're going to open those up a bit because the contrast and the clarity have kind of darkened those down to some of the alterations so that's looking pretty good if i wanted to get really sort of technical with this what i would do is just come in and choose the adjustment brush and then what we could do is we could take the exposure just come up and choose the exposure option from the effects you can see that that now allows me to sort of bump the exposure up a little bit I just choose auto mask to make sure that I just get what I want, which is the helicopter, this example, and then just paint over the helicopter just to bring back some of that, that missing detail. And then I can just do just the exposure to get it where I want. That's looking a bit better. I, I like that. That's looking good. So there's before, there's after. So we bring back some of that detail that's in there. So I'm happy with that. So we just click on done. And finally, what I do to make this look even more filmic is come up to the crop and just choose change it from the original and just choose 16 by 9 which is the aspect ratio that a lot of films and tv are being using so we'll click on that position it as we see fit to make sure we've got it exactly what we want and then we can sort of double click or click on done to get that finished end result and there we are that's how easy it is to create this sort of band of brothers kind of effect so let's take a look at a before and after to see exactly where we started and where we've ended up so there we go, there's our before and after, and as you can see, the original image is looking pretty good, but the one below it definitely looks a lot more like something out of a movie, a still from something like Saving Private Ryan or Band of Brothers. Well, I hope you found this video useful. Remember, you can download that free preset in the description below. If you have any comments, questions, or feedback on this video, please pop those in the comment section. Don't forget to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to be kept up to date with all the new content we add every single week. Well, until next time, take care.